Hey guys, in this video I'll be going over fuel management for the Mirage F1 CE. First I'll go over internal fuel and then I'll go over external fuel. So let's go over the fuel gauges first. In the Mirage, there's three different ways to see how much fuel you have left. The three fuel indicators are in this yellow rectangle down here. If you click on the bottom of, the, of your stick, you can get it out of the way. So the first one is this one on the left. This is called the dual fuel indicator. The reason it's called the dual fuel indicator is because the fuel system is kind of split into a left system and a right system. So this indicator shows how much fuel is in each system. This gauge has two arrows and one arrow shows how much fuel is in the left system and one arrow shows how much fuel is in the right system. It looks like there's one arrow because they're right on top of each other right now, but in fact there are actually two arrows. This gauge has two different modes. You can change the mode with this switch right here. If the switch is pointed up, that means the gauge is showing how much fuel is in your main tanks. The Mirage has main tanks in the fuselage of the plane, and it also has tanks in the wings. So when this little switch is pointed up, this gauge shows how much fuel is in the main tanks, not in the wings. If the switch is pointed down, that shows how much fuel is in the feeder tanks. The feeder tanks are the tanks right before the engine. They are the tanks that send the fuel directly to the engine. So once again, if the, air, if the switch here is pointed down, then the gauge will show you how much fuel is in the feeder tanks. And if the switch is pointed up, then the gauge will show you how much fuel is in all the other tanks except the wing tanks. There's also a button here where you can test the gauge. Next is the fuel remaining indicator. The fuel remaining indicator is this one right here. This shows you how many liters of fuel you have left in total. So all your tanks in the plane, your fuselage tanks, your feeder tanks, the wing tanks, the external tanks, all your fuel in total is shown right here with this gauge. There's two really important things to know about this fuel gauge. The first one is that every time you refuel the plane, you have to reset this gauge. You can reset this gauge manually, or you can have it done automatically. You need to go to the settings in DCS to choose if you want the gauge to be reset automatically. So I'm in the main menu right now, and if you click the settings cogwheel at the top, and you click special settings, and then you find the Mirage F1. You need to check this box here that says counters reset automatically on rearm refuel. If you do that, every time you refuel the plane, the fuel, the fuel counter will automatically reset to show you how much fuel you have left in total, so you don't have to worry about it. If you uncheck this, then every time you refuel the plane, you'll have to manually set how much fuel you have so I would definitely recommend having it set, uh, checked so it's just automatic. That was the first important thing to know about the fuel remaining indicator. The second important thing to know is that the indicator makes a really loud clicking noise when you're flying. When you're in the settings, if you want, you can check this here so it will kind of muffle it so it's less annoying. If you want it to be more realistic, you can just uncheck it it will have that clicking noise like in real life but if you don't care about that and you just want to make it quieter then you can check this so you don't have to listen to it the last way to see how much fuel you have left is with this panel right here this panel shows you all the fuel tanks in the plane and it tells you when one of them is empty if it is a square that means it's an internal tank if it's an oval shape that means it's an external tank and whenever one of them goes empty, uh, it will light up red. For example, if this middle oval here lights up red, that means my middle external tank is empty. You can test it with this switch here. This panel is important because there's no fuel gauge that shows how much gas is in the external tanks. So this panel is the only way to know that your external tanks are empty. So in summary, these are the three things that you can use to tell how much fuel you have left. I would probably just use this one in the middle so I can tell how much fuel I have left in total. And I would just use this to tell when my external tanks are empty. Those were the three fuel indicators. Now we'll go over the fuel controls. 
first is the main fuel switch. It's on the left here and it's protected with this red cover. So if you open the cover and you flip this switch to the right, it will shut off the fuel. Next is the afterburner fuel switch. If you come back here and you see this switch with the black and yellow cover, if you flip this up and flip that switch, that will shut off fuel to the afterburner. This is just used in emergencies. For example, if there's an afterburner fire or if the afterburner won't turn off, then you would use this switch. Next is the fuel pumps. If you go back to the main fuel switch, right below it are the fuel pumps. There's three fuel pumps. These two right here are the left and right pumps. I mentioned earlier there is a left fuel system and a right fuel system. So this switch on the left is the pump for the left system and this is the pump for the right system. This switch on the bottom is the starting pump. This is the fuel pump for the starter system. Next is the crossfeed switch. If you go back to where the fuel gauges were, this switch here is the crossfeed switch. Normally the left fuel system and the right fuel system are separate, but if one of the systems has a lot more fuel than the other one for some reason, you can turn on the crossfeed switch and it will open a connection between the two systems so the fuel can level out. For example, with this gauge here, you can see the two arrows are right on top of each other. So that means the left system and the right system are even, so I don't need the crossfeed. But if one of the arrows was over here and then the, and the other one was all the way over here, that means the two fuel systems are not even for some reason, so I have to turn on the crossfeed to even them out. Next is the emergency transfer switch. It's right next to the crossfeed switch. It's this one on the right. If you turn this switch on, this will make it where the fuel from your tanks will be fed to the engine with gravity. The manual doesn't really explain it very much, but I'm guessing what this is for is if your fuel pumps break, then you can turn this on and you can just use gravity to get the fuel to the engines. You probably won't ever have to use this in DCS, but just in case, that is what that does. In summary, for the internal fuel system, there's not really much you have to worry about. It pretty much runs completely automatic. All you have to do is just come down here and check your fuel every once in a while. Now we'll go over the external fuel system. The Mirage F1 can carry three external fuel tanks, one on each wing and one in the middle. To put the fuel tanks on, you click backslash on your keyboard to open the menu and you click ground crew and click rearm and refuel. You can put a fuel tank in the middle here, so you just right click and hover over fuel tank and you can select a uh, 1000 liter or a 2000 liter and you can also put fuel tanks on the wings. You can go to pylon 3 and 5 and you can right click and do fuel tank and do the 1000 liter and then you click OK. By the way, in order to rearm and refuel in the Mirage, you ha if your engine is on, you have to have the canopy open. You don't have to open the canopy all the way. One thing you can do is if you click on this lever on top and then you unlock the canopy. I already unlocked it, but when you unlock it, it will make a warning noise. So you just click this button here to silence it. So, so like I said, this lever right here, you just click it to point it down. And then if you click on the canopy handle, it will just open the canopy a little bit. So that way you can rearm and refuel. Let me get my fuel tanks again. Request rearming. Copy. Here are what the fuel tanks look like. Once you got your external tanks on, it's mostly automatic. There's just one thing you need to do. You need to flip one switch to use the external tanks. What you need to do is come down to the yellow box we were at earlier, and right under it is this switch here, and you need to flip this switch down so you can use your external tanks. This switch controls what order the tanks are drained in. So if you don't have any external tanks, you have it up, but if you have external tanks, you flip it down. Once you've done that, your plane is set up to use external tanks and everything else after that will be automatic and you don't have to worry about anything. One thing to keep in mind, there is no fuel gauge for the external tanks. For the external tanks, there's no way to know how much fuel is in them. So you just have to use this panel 
and when the when the little light comes on you know the tank is empty and you can jettison it the last thing i'll be talking about with the external tanks is how to jettison them there's two ways to jettison them you can do a selective jettison or a emergency jettison the jettison controls are on the left here first i'll go over selective jettison you use this switch here to select what you want to jettison if you have the switch all the way up it will jettison your outer whatever is attached to your outer wings. If you have it in the middle, it will jettison whatever is attached to your inner wings. And if you have it all the way down, it will jettison whatever is in the center of your plane. In the Mirage, you can't put fuel tanks on the outer wings. So if you set it to the top position, it won't do anything unless you have a weapon attached there. So for jettisoning fuel tanks, you just will use the middle position for the inner wing tanks and the bottom for the center tank. Let's do the inner wing tanks first. I put it to the middle and I flip this up. You can see I have my tanks attached right now. If I click this, now you can see the wing tanks are gone. And now I'll do the center tank. I'll put it all the way down and click it. And you can see the center tank is gone. Now I'll go over emergency jettison. This cap with the black and white lines is for the emergency jettison. If you flip it up and click this button, it will just drop everything on your plane. Be careful with this one because it will not only drop your tanks, it will drop everything. So if you have weapons attached, it will drop those too. As you can see, I have three tanks here. If I click the emergency jettison, all my tanks are gone now. Next, I'll go over some warning lights for the fuel system. The warning panel is down here on the right. Four of these lights are for the fuel system. First is this one right here that says BP. If this light comes on, that means that there is low pressure in the system that's feeding fuel to the engine. So basically the engine is not getting fuel for some reason. The main time that this BP light is on is when you haven't started up yet and you forgot to turn on your starter pump. So if you try to start your plane and you notice it's not working, then you can check this and if you see the BP light, then you know, okay, I forgot to turn on the starter pump. And just a reminder, the starter pump is this one right here. To the right of the BP light are these two yellow lights here. It's kind of hard to see, but one of them says BPG, and then the other one says BPD. These are the lights for the left and right fuel pumps. If one of these lights comes on, that means there is low pressure in that fuel pump. So that means that the fuel pump could be broken, or it's not turned on, or it's not getting enough fuel. And there's one more warning light for the fuel system. So we went over this one, BP, and then right next to it is BPG and BPD. So if you stay on this row all the way to the end, it's kind of hard to read, but there's a light that says NIV. If the NIV light comes on, that means that one of the feeder tanks has less than 250 liters of fuel. I mentioned before that the feeder tanks are the tanks in the plane that, are, that send fuel directly to the engine. There's a left one and a right one. And if either of them gets less than 250 liters of fuel, the NIV light will come on. The feeder tanks are the last tanks to get drained out. So basically, if the NIV light comes on, that means you're about to run out of gas. Out of all the four lights for the fuel system, the main one that I would remember is the BP one right here. Because the BP light will come on if you try to start your engine and you forgot to turn on the starter pump. The last thing to mention for the fuel system is that the Mirage has an accumulator tank which basically builds up fuel and it allows you to fly upside down for a little bit. The thing to keep in mind is that the accumulator tank only has enough fuel for you to fly upside down for 10 to 15 seconds at a time. So if you're going to fly upside down, make sure you don't do it for too long because it will run out of fuel. That was fuel management for the Mirage F1 CE. Thanks for checking out this video and I'll see you later.